Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the second installment of Fuck Canada 2K19, in which an entire country redeems itself via a single event. But before we get into that, let's take a look at some background info for those of you too day drunk to remember my first time into the land of healthcare and an obsession with maple syrup that turned out to be more real than any stereotype could have possibly prepared me for. So, to summarize my initial visit to Canada, I was invited for an event that shall not be named. The head organizer managed to yank my my bangs and smush his lips against my face in the space of two seconds. They spent two hours in my hotel room uninvited to verbally assault me with some rendition of Fringlish, the likes of which I never want to hear again. They came out of the bathroom with their fly down before leaving, and finally wrapped up several more instances of extreme discomfort by not checking my flight, leading me to miss my plane home by roughly 10 hours and be stranded in Canada because the next plane broke. The flight after that was cancelled and left me stuck in the country for another hellish day of dealing with airport bullshit, hotel miscommunication, and general frick-frackery that cannot be overstated as the sole and complete responsibility of an event set in a country whose initial welcome of complete unprofessionalism had not exactly left the best impression as a whole. This pseudo-polite nonsense essentially translates to I was ready to write Canada off as a desolate hellscape of frog-eating moose fuckers, and in no way did I expect to be convinced to return. That is, until KCON came out of the woodwork and changed the entire shebang. Those of you looking for actual footage of the event can find that with lovely lore and firemate photography, both of which do it better than I ever could. Because I hate making event videos, and I refuse to do them outside of storytime style from this point on, anyone who has a problem with that is welcome to sue me. I haven't had anyone try in at least a couple heartbeats, and God knows it went so well for those offended parties the first time around. That strongly tempting fate for I'm going to tell you a story that should distract you from the hollow void in your chest cavity where a soul should reside. Yes, I am coming for you on a Friday afternoon afternoon, and it all started in the country that I had previously written off as God's answer to the question, what if French people were dipped in pancake juice and set loose in America's attic? Because KCON was bougie as frack, it was set in the Omni King Edward Hotel, and this place fulfilled all the fancy horse shittery my Motel 6 American heart could possibly desire. Giant chess pieces to remind you of capitalism's absolute checkmate on the middle class? Check! Ornate guest rooms not unlike the private chambers of someone who makes their money in blood diamonds and the tears of children? Check. Check. I've never been so satisfied with my ability to live like a trust fund baby for a day, and considering this was my first time in a hotel that trusted its clientele enough to have a Keurig in the room, I was equally impressed that their usual guests' first intention must not be to stuff the thing in their luggage and flee the vicinity. I set the AC to arctic temperatures because I can, and passed out. Day 1. Do you like fucking dealer's rooms that look like the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin? Do you also like racks of unworn brand JSKs, accessories, and etc. just waiting for you to drop blood money on because you fracking can. Are you also interested in indie brands surrounding this island of Japanese brand glory for you to peruse after you've gutted the competition to get an APJSK for half the price you were expecting? KCON had all of this, plus panels that I vaguely remember participating in, but fuck that because who needs panels when the ticket price lets you into a land of sparkling Lolita shopping, no shipping necessary, and without having to wake up afterward with the heartfelt sorrow of having dreamed it all up post a couple shots of the strongest tequila. Seriously though, the dealer's room was that good. I envy the living frack out of you Canadian bacons. And in all seriousness, my Swiss cheese riddled recollection of anything outside of that room included people enjoying the panels with me and Lore, and there being a fashion show at some point, which can be seen in Firemate photography and lovely Lore's videos, again, not important to me because I cannot buy it. While we're on the subject, the second thing that lured me back to that fracking country, lovely Lore. Lore was also to be a guest at KCON, meaning Lore and Holly would be there too. I was to hang out with them for some days post-event, and bribing me with spending time with my friends is a sure way to get me to leave my house for more than five minutes. I had a fabulous time working with them during the event, and day one ended with my not deeply regretting ever having agreed to come. Also, my roommates finally showed up after some flight frickery. They would turn out to be the designers behind Lady Sloth, and I have never been more grateful to have not said horrible things about a brand than I was upon rooming with two Polish designers I was pretty sure could have disappeared me into the Canadian tundra without so much as a second thought. In all seriousness, rooming with them was a highlight of my experience with the event. They are exceptionally lovely people, and I am certainly not saying that to avoid being discovered in a snowbank the next time our paths cross, especially because we have our differences about the thermostat, and I may have set it to temperatures not feasible for human existence. It goes without saying that their booth and wares were extraordinarily popular, which brings us to the next part. Day 2, and our final one of the event. The second day at KCON was set for the tea party. Anything else that happened 
happened is secondary, and Zul knows my previous experience with such events was to expect to be hungry, fight over the sweets like a rabid dog dressed like a person, and or prepare to be miserably disappointed with the entire affair to the tune of a $50 ticket that could have been used on a good chicken dinner, or steak at a place that doesn't want customers rioting post-dinner. That said, this was not that tea party. The Omni King Edward Hotel boasts the best tea service in the city, and at the risk of sounding even more insufferable than I've already managed, there is a part of me that appreciates their commitment to bougie, right down to having ornate little strainers for each cup, as if the user could strain out any strands of proletariat propaganda that had slipped through this facade of high-class frippery. This is verbosity, for this tea party could gun down most Lipton-serving convention attempts to placate the Lolita community at a distance and come out looking fabulous. The at least five towers of sweets per table meant I didn't have to shank someone to get a decent scone. There was actually food left over, and the tea was so good that I am inclined to spit if some Tezo bullshit ever tries to touch my lips again. KCON absolutely ruined every single other tea party I've ever attended. Every inclination towards ruthless excess was met step for step. And to sum up the event in the crudest of words, I went home on time without so much as a single hiccup because this two-day trip into glorious Lolitadom wasn't run by someone who takes the human ability to suck and dials it up to a level that would likely collapse a dying star. You should only attend if you want to be surrounded by everything good that North America has to offer. This event has essentially ruined my life because I have to live on knowing that my favorite bastion of brand and tea exists in another country. It wasn't enough that the Canadians had healthcare and public transport, now they have fracking KCON too, and I hate them for it down to the tiniest bits of cinders left where my heart used to be. I only sleep at night knowing Americans aren't getting fucked by customs, and you hockey sticks with head bows can chew on that. Because that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and I'd like to thank my patrons for riding with me down this road to hell. You guys are the best co-pilots I could ask for, and should you like to join LWLN in its mission of verbal assault, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolita news for more content that is best left to a level of hellfire best suited to ridding the human spirit of mortal sin. I don't know where that came from. Thank you KCON for making the terrible mistake of inviting me to your event. Thanks again to all of you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> What's this new kawaii trend, Laura? It's called pain. It's called <laughs> Wear whatever shoes you want that are comfortable. Because these are cute. That sounds like something an Ida would say, Laura. So much pain. You can kiss my blisters on my toes.